For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker. If you think you're looking at a couple of tree stumps, look closer. The two trees that once stood here were cut down by Penn State arborists in hopes of keeping elm yellows at bay. Elm yellows is a disease that has infected elms throughout the northeastern United States. It has moved slowly, almost with a deliberate cadence, and now it has officially found its way onto the University Park campus. This could be ground zero for something that could affect this campus for generations to come. It is believed to start with the white-banded elm leafhopper. By feasting on the leaves of a healthy elm, an already infected leafhopper leaves behind its saliva that injects elm yellows into the tree. Elm yellows is caused by a mycoplasm type organism. It previously was known as elm phloem necrosis. It causes the phloem of the tree to shut down and ultimately resulting in the death of the tree. The phloem and the roots are parts of the transport system that supplies the tree with all the nutrients it needs to survive. Elm yellows is a phytoplasm or bacteria-like organism that destroys the phloem and root cells. Once the diagnosis is made, there is little that can be done. The tree will be removed to curtail the spread of the disease. But this leads to discussion about possibly defending the trees from the white banded elm leaf hopper and it would seem that the obvious defense would be to control for the insect. The decision that comes with that is knowing exactly what to control and when to do it. While all literature has the white-banded elm leafhopper as the carrier for the disease, Penn State researchers can't substantiate what they've read. We actually haven't trapped any of the white-banded elm leafhopper, but we've trapped a lot of other leafhoppers during the season, and we've tested them and although we don't know for sure that they're actually moving the phytoplasm from tree to tree, we do know that they have fed on elms that have the phytoplasm, and we can detect the phytoplasm inside their bodies. Those who come to Penn State from across the Commonwealth and across the country see the trees on campus, and especially the elms, as part of the foundation of University Park. The first planting of elms occurred at Penn State in the 1890s with another in the 1930s. They have always complemented the landscape of Penn State as well as municipalities around the country. There are almost 300 elm trees on the University Park campus. Some stand as high as 115 feet and span as much as 100 feet across. Many of the oldest are around central campus near Old Main. To lose one tree would be devastating, but what about 10? 20, 50, 100, or maybe 300. That space is a historic landmark as far as its buildings, as well as its landscape planting. It's the site of uh, one of our most important gatherings, you know, uh, the, the Arts Festival time, as well as other public gatherings in that space, and, you know, really defines Penn State as an as a institution. And any time we have to cut down a significant tree to, on campus, it, it's, it's like losing a friend. And, uh, you know, in a situation where we may have to take 300 down, it's, it can be very traumatic. Right now, cutting down trees may be the only hope of slowing down the disease. But because Penn State has such a large elm population, the university has become the most relevant researcher for the cure of elm yellows. It's really right here on the Penn State campus where we still have almost 300 elms that we'd like to protect these particular elms. I think most municipalities would just write off the elms and say, well, we're going to lose our 15 or 20 elms, we'll just replace them with something else, and they would go on. But here, because the elms are so important to the campus, we want to see if we can stop the epidemic and save the elms that we've got. Along with investing in research to combat the disease, Penn State has begun to plan for the future. If trees come down, then what? What do you plant? Where do you plant? But the trees are going to be sadly missed if they and when they have to come down. So what's important next is to replant uh, correctly and strategically. This time we want a much more diverse range of tree species than was done at that time. So that if such a thing were to happen again, it would not have as severe impact as this disease might have on our elms. Whatever happens here with the 
Elm Yellow situation. Uh, we will go out of our way to make sure that that landscape is restored and uh, prepared for the future so that you know it can be enjoyed by Penn Staters long into the future. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.